The song Save Me comes from my journey so far in my life and one of the most impacting things in my life is when I was involved in a major accident that involved me being clinically dead. And I remember that day just so vividly, just coming down this hill and just seeing this ute parked on the side of the road. And I saw all the tradesmen stuff on the ute, except for the ladder that was sticking on the side. And I remember just coming straight through and, and trying to miss the ute on the side of the road and unfortunately impacting the ladder that went straight through my face, right to the back of my head. And I remember feeling that pressure as it was actually literally being transferred through the front of my face to the back of my head until I got thrown off it and feeling the pressure of my head hitting the back of the road which literally felt that complete thud and as I felt that I just felt like I left my body and as I left my body I could see myself literally looking down from I call heaven or a timeless place because everything was like in slow motion everything was just taking its time and I could see down at my body and I could see this car come on the side of the road at the last minute they swerved to miss me but unfortunately they ran over the rest of my head right at the very top where now my whole face was literally flat and um, I could see all the paramedics coming up and I could see all the things that were going to play, take place and, and they just, I just remember this particular sound where this guy just said no he's gone he's dead and I just felt straight away that I was never going to come back and as, as I was just standing in this place of timelessness where I could see literally all of heaven and earth just coming together and I could see everything that just taken place and just all of a sudden being taken up through many dimensions and just standing right before my gate and, and, and in one hand I could just without me doing they just pull apart and like a movie camera in this hand here I could just see literally my life before me everything I lived right up to the accident and on my right hand, like in a movie camera, I could see the life that I had with Jesus, all the things that he had saved me from, all the things that he had done. And then all of a sudden, my hands just coupled together. And as I was standing before this gate, I was literally vibrating with such frequency, such a power. I could even see just like a light behind it that was just literally glowing so bright. And all of a sudden, it just popped open. And as it popped open, I could feel the power and the presence and the glory of God. It was like the all-consuming fire. I literally could feel the, the vibrant so I could feel the heat of the presence of God and all of a sudden I could feel a breath drawing me in I could feel like I was getting picked up by his hands and then all of a sudden I was drawn into his presence where I could see literally his face it was huge it was it was just like a, a face I could see every day of my life as we look at each other it's the same experience but it was so big and so huge all I could see was the outline because it was glowing in such glory and such power and such intensity it was like an all-consuming fire and I could see the nose I could see the eyes I could feel him literally breathing upon me as he poured his breath into my life I could see Jesus literally coming up to me on the right hand side just taking my hand and just embracing me and and I could feel at that moment and that time as I could see the face of God as Jesus was embracing me the feeling I had was I felt like I needed nothing it felt like that my whole life was complete and I was home. It was just like, I just knew that this is where I belonged. And uh, at that moment where, where Jesus look, took me through and, and showed me some things of his heart that he had for me, he, he took me through many chambers. He took me through many gates and portals. And, and one of them that was just amazing for me was, was when he took me into, the, I call it the psalmist room. There's actually no particular name, but that's just what comes to me. Because all I could hear was a musician's playing. I could hear the frequency. I could, I could feel the sound of the presence of God coming through every note like thunder and lightning. I could feel the glory and the colors coming out of all the notes that was being played. And as David was on, on my right hand side, he came up to me and, and Jesus introduced me as King David. And, and David just sat there with me explaining what it was to be the frequency, to be the sound, to be the resonance of God's glory. And I just remember just listening to what he had to say. And then as he was listening, I could see that actually became the sound and the frequency because that was one of my heart was to be the sound and the presence of God's glory. And uh, as I went through many chambers and through many gates, as I explained before, I, I guess I want to leave it there because for me, it was about being the sound. And, and I remember the last bit of heaven when I was in there. And don't forget, my body is dead. I'm literally no longer in existence on the earth. Um, I, I just remember standing at this particular, if you like to say, bridegroom area where, where it was like I was, had to make a choice. And Jesus just said to me, he said, you know, it's not your time. And then the Father, literally God himself, I could feel him breathing on me. 
and he said, it's your choice, you can either stay or you can go. And uh, w what the mandate was left with me is to bring the power of first love. And I said, I will come back. And as I said, I will come back, I could feel literally the breath of God entering into my lungs. And I could feel my body leaving that place, but actually staying at the same time. And all of a sudden I was going through dimensions and layers of heaven and earth going through. I can't even explain the, the magnitude and the power and the force that was happening in. And as I entered back into my body, it was deformed. I felt like that my whole spirit had to rearrange itself to enter back into its broad body. And as that breath was just consuming me, all of a sudden, as that breath stopped, I entered into my body and all of a sudden my body was literally awakened and I felt home back in my body. And I remember as I was in the back of, uh, of the ambulance at the time, I remember the ambulance guy got such a fright because all of a sudden my body became alive and all these things just went off in the, in the ambulance and all of a sudden they fried, they started to melt and the guy's just knocking on the back of the guy's seat saying, this guy's still alive, I think you need to hurry. And then all of a sudden I got taken in such an emergency into that hospital and uh, all of a sudden it was just like, I felt no pain, no discomfort. They did all these surgeries just to stop all the blood from like finishing off from bleeding and then all of a sudden they just put me up onto all these taps and all these things just to make fluids going back into my body. And I remember one particular thing is as my body became alive, I just happened to have a surgery that, that um, an American came for, to Australia just for this surgery to actually build a face that was made of titanium and I just happened to be the guinea pig at that time. And I remember entering into this surgery, and this was my last surgery, I went through many surgeries, but this was my last surgery, and I, I remember the doctor saying, because I didn't think I was quite with it at the time, and, uh, and that they actually used to explain all this stuff to the nurses, what to do with me, and I had no idea I could hear. And uh, they said, this guy will be lucky to last three weeks, but we're going to do this surgery because we want to try this out. And they said, he'd just be a vegetable, he'd have no communications. And, uh, and as I went into this surgery, all of a sudden I just felt my spirit leave my body again. I could actually see the whole surgery taking place. And then everything went dark as this last surgery had finished. And all of a sudden I just remember waking up into my body feeling extreme pain and discomfort. I knew that I was actually in the, the room of, of just recovery and, and I never felt so much pain. And all of a sudden I could just feel my mother holding my hand. And she just said something so simple, and she didn't say it loud, she actually said it to sp uh, into her spirit. And I could feel it literally heart to heart with her, and she said, Mark, don't leave me. And actually at that point before she said that, I said, God, I want to go home. I can't handle this pain. And then all of a sudden, God just gave me this endurance. I said, God, I can do this. I just want to stay, help me. And then all of a sudden, I could enter my body in a new state where I could actually just bear the pain enough. And, and over a couple of weeks, over a couple of times, uh, you know, all of a sudden my body just started to improve. I started to communicate to people and, and, and it was it a was definitely difficult period to go through because everything had changed from that point. And the, the whole journey was a miracle because that, they said I'd be a vegetable. I had all these out clinics. I had all these things that I had to endure. And, uh, do you know, not once did I have to go to any of the brain clinics because I was never a vegetable. I always had communication. I was actually out of that hospital from being dead, coming back alive in three weeks, which is a miracle in itself. And it was at that time where this journey and even this song, Save Me, came from because it opened up my, my whole journey of life changed. Everyone expected me to be the same person, but I just, I couldn't be the same person anymore. I couldn't think the same. I couldn't do the things the same. I couldn't even literally sing. And, and that was the thing that broke my heart. And I remember crying out to God and saying, but this is what I was passionate for. I really always wanted to, to play the guitar. I always wanted to sing for God, not in a public forum, but just be able to play and sing, even if it was just in the bedroom. And, and I couldn't even do all that kind of stuff. But, but I said to God, this is what I want. And he actually replied back to me. And people say, how do you hear from God? It literally felt like a prompter. I actually could hear his voice. He says, how much do you want this? And I said, with everything. And he said, I want you to work for it. And he actually gave me a plan of actually how to open up the palate of my voice. And um, because I had a trachea in my throat, it was very hard to actually get a proper note out. And it was so excruciating at times, I actually had blood being poured out of my mouth and throat. And uh, I was dared not to tell anyone because I just knew that this was a scary thing to go through. And, and I just still felt to trust God with it, even though at times I did lose hope. 
And then it was like three weeks later, I started to get notes and sounds to come out. And then all of a sudden, here I could, I could sing again, all of a sudden, over time. And this took a long time. Six months later, I was, I was able to actually play at the point that I was before. And in fact, I think I was advanced. I think I actually went further. And you know, in three months, I was actually doing small little gigs after my accident, just, just little ones, not much. But you know, all of a sudden, just started opening up some, some doors for me. But the other thing I found hard is I felt I just let everyone down. And I, I'd been through all this accident and people still expected me to be the same. I really felt that even at that time, I remember feeling like my dad never really could see who I was because, because I'd changed so much and I just felt that I couldn't live to the expectation that he wanted me to live before. And even to his death, I felt that he never got to see who I truly was. And, and that's been the whole journey and that's where this song, Save Me, has come from. This is just a small portion of my journey, but this is where I had all these challenges and had so many more challenges after this. Just my whole life, even to this day, has been challenges. And if it wasn't for the cry of my heart to cry out for God, I would not be here. I would not be able to go through all the stuff and the trials and all the things that I've been through if it wasn't for God responding back in love with me. If it wasn't for His love, I would not be here right now. And this song, Save Me, really comes out of that experience where I felt like that, that I couldn't live up to people's expectations. I couldn't even live up to my own. And yet, somehow God's voice saved me and says, you don't need to, you just need to be you. And he didn't try to change me through this whole thing. And as soon as I stopped trying to change myself, that's when I started to progress in my life and my walk with God. So I just want to share this, that, that if you hear this song, I really pray it touches you because this is where I had to let go of myself and just be who I am, not trying to live up to other people's expectation or even my own. And this is where this song really touches me that, that it can go out into a forum where people can also be touched by it as well. So thank you for letting me share this and I hope you enjoy the song. Even though I run. 